welcome to the Bantamweight Division Mid-Season Report. I'm your host, Matt Baby Gronk Leon. With me as always is Deanna Dirty D. Berkowitz. Hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> We're here today talking about the Bantamweight Division. Uh, I'm Matt Baby Gronk Leon, your, co- your host, and with me as my co-host is D. Deanna Dirty D. Berkowitz. Um, and our first guest today is Jen Golden Cramp, plays for first down. Um, so Jen, how's, uh, how's it, what's it like playing in the Bantamweight Division? Uh, it's getting really good out there. I mean, we first started this team in the second season of Bantamweight, and there weren't a lot of teams, so now there's like two huge divisions. It's really competitive, but it's really fun. You know, Jen and Deanna play on the all-ladies, first ever all-lady team in our Bantamweight division. Um, tell us, tell us how, that, how that dynamic works. Um, we are getting better with each game. I think you would have to agree. I mean, today we only lost by seven points. We scored 30, which is like really cool. Um, the more we practice, the better we're getting, and I think teams are really taking it seriously. I mean, we're just we're getting better with each each pass. We're getting better. Two weeks ago, we lost by a point. Yeah. And now we're averaging, you know, four touchdowns a game instead of one. It's, yeah. It's a pretty drastic improvement. Yeah. That's great. That's great to hear. Deanna, do you have any questions? Um, so around the league, thinking about Bantam, who do you think is an early MVP candidate? From what I saw today, just even today, Ricky Hudson from the Untouchables, he is really good. We, it was really hard to cover him. His hips just are like mangoes. We can't pull his flags, and he is deceptively fast. Do not sleep on him. He will just run circles around. That's a good one. Yeah. And, you know, playoffs are coming up. I know, you know, first down may or may not be in the playoffs, in the playoff picture. Who do you think at this, at this stage would be a favorite for the playoff game? Um, I would have to say... Um, we ha- we don't play them, but I'm gonna say Major Key. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're undefeated. I don't know how they did today, but they're four and out, like five and out, so four and out. Um, so I think I mean they have a pretty stacked roster, and I know Little. You know, I used to play with him. I do play with him, so I think they're the favorite. Little Dirty to told me we have Laron coming on. Laron stats Marino. Major Key. key. <laughs> you can hear him in the background. Yeah. So you know, we'd like to thank Jen for joining us this afternoon. Of and, course. Uh, that's all for that for right now. Thanks, Jen. We've got Ezekiel Ellie, I mean, Laron Stadzarino from <laughs> Major Key. That was a good one. Um, so, Laron, how's Major Key doing this season? And do you see them going to the playoffs? Major Key is doing amazing. Um, probably one of our best seasons since we went to the playoffs. Um, picked up uh, little Velasquez. You know, he, he changed the dynamic of the team. Everybody loves him. Chemistry is there. We're currently 4-0, so we we'll are definitely make a playoffs. I had Little on Dragons last season, a couple of games, and he really does well with the running back and playing kind of second QB position. Is that kind of what he's doing for Is he QBing for you guys? He's definitely this yeah, he's QB. So as a good okay. GM. Yeah, tell us why yeah. you stepped down as quarterback. Um, so as a good GM, I am GM of the year. Uh, you know, I got to make tough decisions, not just for the team, but for myself as well. You know, I noticed that I wasn't doing anything productive. Um, ever since we made the playoffs, we declined. Um, me as quarterback wasn't helping, so I had to look out, look elsewhere. So uh, brought in Little, and we're four and zero. So yeah. your, nick, your nickname is Stats, right? So you're yeah. all about all about the stats. Yeah, that's why the league be, is great. Who would be your 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 MVP candidate so far this season? Could be on Major Key, could be on, an, on another team that you played. Who's your MVP right now? Um, you can do male and female. Male, I'm gonna have to go with outside of Major Key. I like Sean Best, man. Um, he's, he's, no flex. No flex. Yeah, he's he's doing amazing with that team. I seen the team without him, and I seen the team with him. Big difference. Yeah, that's the true definition of that being my Yeah, that's the Sean Best is. Is that your last name, Best? Best. Yeah. That's, yeah. Crazy, that's crazy. And, uh, and what do you think about the ladies? Oh, the ladies. For ladies. The ladies are awesome, man. It's, it's, it's so hard. Um, my major key ladies are doing amazing as well. Angie is doing great. Um, but if I got to pick outside of major key. I have to go with Dirty D, man. What she's doing, real talk. What she's doing, like just to see the progression in the lady. I'm a fan of the ladies in general, sports. So to see the progression of how that team is going every year, every season, can't beat that. That's nice, but I'm gonna go with Julia and Helena after today. Um, first down doesn't get credit. They, you know, they they they're in the stats, whatever. They never make playoffs. But you have to give credit to the people for the tackles, the receptions, the touchdowns. I mean, they're going up against huge guys like Gronk, and we're scoring. So I've got to give credit to all the ladies of, of my team. Cool. First, you know, and that's why we do the, the awards at the end of the season. You know, because it does incorporate you know, some of the teams that may not have made the playoffs, but also have really good seasons, like like first down. We do incorporate those, you know, those within you know 
to give out the awards. That's, that's fireworks going off in the background. That's because I'm here. That's because I'm here. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, go for so it. So I'm currently racing to 100 sacks, all-time record. Me and my good friend Lee. Um, I see Lee's, Lee's over, Lee's over there, there actually Lee, somehow. Lee's our next guest. So, so Lee is currently at 93. I'm at 98. I got four today and a safety. Um, what's the, you know, let me, since you're saying that, what's the, what, how's, what's your opinion of, about bantamweight? How's it maybe different than heavyweight? You know, what's the, you know, what do you, what do you feel like when bringing a team into to bantamweight? What's, how are they successful? As of now, I don't see the difference. It's the same level of competi competitivism. It's the, from the ladies to the rookies coming in, you know, maybe the first two seasons, yeah, you can definitely see the difference between heavyweight and bantam. But now, Bantam is just competitive. Yeah, There's I think no uh, way coming up, you know, Intentional Pounding is coming soon with Lee Kawachi over there. And Intentional Pounding is a great example of that. We'll talk to him in a bit. But they came in, not such a great season. The Bronx on that team, too. And, and then they won yeah. it all the following season. I yeah. feel like that happens to, anything, to yeah. a couple of teams in Bantam. So a lot of Bantam so teams exciting. could definitely play in heavyweight. Agreed, yeah. agreed. Thanks right. for joining us. Some heavyweight teams should go to Bantam. Agreed. Except the cons. Joining us with Intentional Pounding, I also play with Lee on Intentional Pounding. You know, we alluded earlier to, you know, Deanna said that Intentional Pounding was a team that when they were first formed, they struggled, and then next season they won it all. Tell us a little bit about that, you know, the mentality of the team and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we came in, I tried to create a new Bantam team. I tried to create a new Bantam team, and uh, we didn't have a, a great first season, but uh, we came back, we kind of reworked a couple of things, brought in some new players. Kerm took over as quarterback, and uh, we had a great, successful uh, return season. What's your What's your opinion about the bantamweight division? You know, what, like you said, you know, it's different bringing a team in and you know having established players. You know, how do you feel the you know, current competitive level of, of bantamweight right now? I think the overall competition with all the different teams that there are, all the overall competition for bantam is actually a lot better than in the heavyweight. Heavyweight, you kind of know the teams that are going to be in the thick of it. With Bantam, there's just so many teams, like any team can win. It's kind of more it's exciting. It's more exciting, it's a lot of fun. you got different quarterbacks that aren't used to playing quarterback, and it just makes it for a better bit So you guys, intentional pounding, you tend to be up and down all season, yeah. and then in the playoffs, usually you kill it. Yeah. So so tell us about that. What, what goes on during the regular season that then you're just like prepared for playoffs and perform at a higher level? Yeah, the, the last two seasons, we, we went three and three. We Dang. won one of the championships. We tend to do pretty well. Um, coming to, into the playoffs, but this season we're off to a much better start with three and one. So uh, we're looking to hopefully go five and one and go kind of stronger in the playoffs this season. I was just checking the stats. Bree Corona, 21 tackles. I think she's head and shoulders above everybody else, seven above the next person. Yeah. So people like that really helping you guys elevate to the next Definitely. Level. Yeah, um, who would your, you know, in, in saying that, you know, maybe outside, also outside of, of intentional pounding. Who do you think, you know, both male and female MVP candidates at this point? So, Sean Best for me right now is the leading uh, male MVP candidate. Uh, just the way, I mean, I think he won today, so I think that moves him to 5-0. And, oh. and he's just been using Laura really well. He's been using James, uh, Moose, like he's getting the ball around. And they're like, those three players are in the top five in uh, touchdown receptions right now. So he's really doing a good job effectively on uh, running that team. And they're holding up on defense as well, so it's good keeping them uh, winning games. And then for female, I got uh, Lydia from Untouchables. Yep. She's uh, kind of like a quiet killer. She's doing a great job on offense, and then she comes up with interceptions, defensive touchdowns. Like yeah. you don't expect it, and then right. all of a sudden she's like, Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Untouchables has been a little under the weather this season. Yep. Yeah. They had their first win today against us. Um, but Lydia is always out there, like working she's really hard. She's yep. a contender. And then I have to give a shout out to Bree intentional pounding she really honestly like I know she's on my team so I might be a little biased but I think she is a clear-cut female MVP candidate right now. That's great. You know, thanks for joining us Lee. Thank you Lee. This is Deborah Chan from Rancho Carne Toros, a new team that was put together with some BMFL fan favorites so Gronk has a question. So with you know some fan favorites and being Kevin Lyon and Larry DeBudo who was going to be a guest but couldn't join us today. Um, What's it like joining, you know, starting a new team in, in the Bantamweight division? I think with Kevin Lund and Larry, they were very methodical about forming this team, and they formed a great team. They have great receivers, great defenders, and playing on this team, it's very unison. We are on the same page, and honestly, it's great playing with them. It just doesn't even seem like a new team, truthfully. Right. And then with that said, like playing in the Bantamweight division, what, what's that been like? 
Honestly, so I played Bantam since the, the very first time Bantam has started until now. It has changed progressively. It has become, become more competitive and honestly, everyone needs to step up their game. And it's anyone's game. Every day, we come every Sunday, we don't know who's gonna turn up. Yeah, I think that's the coolest part. Like, there's always like, you know, some new teams that, that come in. There's always, you know, there's some teams that return that they have some different players and some other players may jump to, to different teams. So you never really know. There's no, like, like different from heavyweight where you tend to know who the who the contenders are gonna Absolutely. be each and every season. Coming into every bantamweight season, you really don't know. Like, you know, intentional pounding won a championship and then the next season got knocked out in the first round. So it's, it's a very Absolutely. different. It's very different. It's, it is. And, you know, Untouchables has been a, a team that's been in the playoff season and season out, and this season they're just not having they're not having a great season. So you never know what what kind of team you're going to get each right. and every season. So and yeah. I think that's what makes it so great about Bantam is that it's completely unpredictable. You don't know from day to day who's coming forward. Even today, watching first down, you guys were such a powerhouse. You really dominated, and like that is great to see. And then the new, new brand new teams like Toros and a few others that surprise you and have been knocking out veteran teams. This is what's so great about Bantam. It's completely unpredictable versus heavyweight where it becomes very predictable. And you want that like surprise. And that's why I love playing it and I love seeing games because we don't know what's gonna happen every summer. So what made you choose to join, you know, this new team? I know were you on It's a Rap? I was on it last yes. season. So we what, won. What yes. Happened? Okay, so it's a wrap. Wins. They dissolve. This is kind of what happens. In we Bantam, didn't dissolve right? <laughs> for now. We took, we took the season, season off. off. We are gonna come back. Okay. So you heard, it here, you heard it here first. Right? Okay. <laughs> so we're on RCT for one season. We're going back to it's a wrap. But what made you choose to go to this new Bantam squad? Well, Kevin has quarterback a few times for uh, Bantam. Yeah, I so Violet yes, uh, Violet like, Vendettas, and like Kevin has also quarterback outside of the MFL. So it was a no-brainer to go to a team where you have a consistent quarterback who has a, such a high football IQ and can develop a great team. I almost think like losing Kevin Lunn as receiver, I was watching him Friday night, is a shame. Sometimes you have these QBs that are just so good on the other side of the ball, you're like, can't they throw to themselves? <laughs> you, yes, you know? I, same thing with you, you know? It's the same thing. You're a great receiver and a great quarterback, and it's a shame that you can't throw to yourself. But the reality is, it's... It, that's what makes this game so Maybe great. Barring Tyler from uh, heavyweight. <laughs> With that said, you know, you, like you said, you were talking about specific players. Maybe outside of Toros, who would be your, you know, male and female MVP candidate at this point? You know, normally, if you ask me heavyweight or even Friday Night Lights, it's beyond predictable. Here, it's actually I'm not sure. I cannot even give you like I can pick a few. Okay, but there's top three male. Go. <laughs> oh my On god. The spot. Top three. Well, Jules is up there. Okay. Laurent is up. I'll be honest, if I had to pick top three, it has to come from the major key department. Even though No Flex is a top competitor and they're great, it's just major key has been putting up the numbers. They, Laurent is a great general manager and he's been really forming a great team. And like with Little as a quarterback, it's just wow. Yeah, we were just chatting with him. It takes a great leader to like take himself out of quarterback. Exactly. Put someone else in for the exactly. good of the team. Can't say enough about on like as a person too. Um, female top three MVP candidates. You know what? Watching um, a few games today, Katie Limberg and Katie Donahue are very Katie dominant. The Katie's, down. the Katie's are amazing and seeing that is just like wow. I like those are my top two. I don't have a three yet. But it really depends on how things are Julianne Helena. Julianne did really <laughs> well today too, yes. But definitely the case. I'm gonna go all the ladies at first down. Today we killed it. She's not biased or anything like that. It's just gonna be a little here. <laughs> but my Katie's are probably my top two girls for receptions and Good just choice. So last question, at this point, um, you know, you can say Toros. Who do you think, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure what Toros record is right now, um, but Who's your, you know, who's your playoff contender and who's, who do you think is going to win the whole thing? For different brackets? Yeah, for different brackets, both sides. Right now, I think un, um, No Flex is going to be the number one on their division. And when it comes to the other division, I think Major Key will be the other Quick one. Quick question. There. What happens in Bantam? The top team undefeated, they go to the playoffs, boom, they lose in the first round. That How is, that is very, very true. That's happened a few times. times. And 
Like Sometimes I, you want to lose. You, you don't want to be the Patriots in that Super Bowl, right? <laughs> win, 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 lose. And like lose. Exactly. Yeah. My, I always say it, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season at that point. That completely erases everything. Yeah, everybody's oh no. You need to come balls to the wall to playoffs. And if you don't, sit it out. Don't even bother playing. Right. If you don't have the passion and desire to win, don't don't come in for your team. That's bottom line. Well, that's great. You know, thanks thanks for joining us, Deb. Absolutely. Thank you, Thanks, so Thank you for joining us on the Bantamweight mid-season show. Um, thanks to our guests. And, you know, the BMFL gods have blessed us again with a beautiful day. It was supposed to rainstorm, but it did not. So thanks again. And as always, you've been watching The End Zone.